I've gotten a lot of questions from new and aspiring professional organizers about what role containers play on organizing jobs. Like, do you buy organizing containers ahead of time? When do you shop for containers? And how do you charge for that time? Or how much knowledge do professional organizers need to have about different storage containers? I've heard that some organizers pre-shop for containers, so they may show up for a job with organizing products on hand. I don't typically do that, so in today's video, I'm going to explain to you why pre-purchasing storage containers is not part of my business model and when to purchase products for your clients. Hi, I'm professional organizer, Katherine Lawrence. I help you live a life with less clutter so you can have the space for things that truly matter. So do you need to be a storage expert to be a professional organizer? Do you need to bring containers to organizing jobs or pre-shop for containers? First, let's do a quick refresh of the professional organizing process. Now I call this method GDP, which stands for gather and sort, make decisions, and put away. Now that simply means that you're going to follow the order of gather and sort, make decisions, and then put away items that your client decides to keep. Using GDP, purchasing storage containers is a final step, not a first step. So the reason for that is that you want your client to only keep what they love and use. And part of your job as a professional organizer is to facilitate good decision making with your client. Working as a professional organizer is so much more than just packing items into storage bins. Often during the decluttering process, I'm emptying and setting aside those empty storage bins because in an attempt for people to you know, get organized, they've purchased lots of containers. So there is a huge misconception that buying storage containers is the first step to getting organized when it's really the last or possibly even unnecessary if you decide not to store any clutter. So stockpile those empty containers that your client already has and you may not even need to buy any more. So do you need to be a storage expert to be a professional organizer? I will say that it is helpful to have a basic knowledge of where to purchase common organizing containers like shoe boxes and turntables and weather tight storage totes and drawer dividers. Um, I can usually find everything that I need at Container Store, Ikea, or Amazon. And if I'm working with someone in like a hobby space and they need a very specific type of container for let's say organizing you know, sewing equipment, I can take a few minutes and research um, while I'm there with my client and find something that maximizes the existing space and makes items more accessible. But at the end of the day, I would say I spend less than 5% of my time uh, researching and purchasing storage containers. Now, I would love to hear from you if you are working as a professional organizer and containers are a much larger part of your business. Just let me know in the uh, comment section of this video. And in my intro to organizing training course and in my free ebook, I discuss creating a niche for your organizing business. And you may have created a niche that involves more storage containers or even building storage solutions like installing closet systems. And uh, I'll put a link to those resources in the description of this video. And let me know if you have a niche that is more product based in your professional organizing business. Okay, so we've talked about storage containers as the final step of the GDP process. So how do you secure products and how do you charge for that time? I have found that one of the easiest methods for securing proper storage containers is to spend time shopping online while I'm at my client's house during the organizing session and then having the products delivered directly to the client. That way I ensure that they are getting exactly the products they need because I'm there to do the measurements and get the right number of items and I don't have to store or deliver products to their house. So depending on the complexity of how many storage products 
uh, we're putting into place, I can book another session in about a week after those products are delivered to help my client organize their items into you know, bins and create labels. Another approach is to shop for the client and charge a personal shopping fee. So you as the organizer would spend an hour or so at local retailers purchasing the products and then charge the client for that time and bring the products to your next scheduled appointment. Personally, I don't do this very often, um, but it's really more to do with the type of organizing that I practice, which is more of a focus on downsizing and decluttering. And I've also found it's a little difficult for for me to do shopping because I'm such an advocate of non-consumerism. So I spend very little time at retail stores. So it's really out of my way to go to a retail store because it's just sort of not part of my weekly routine. But it's absolutely a service you could offer to your clients as part of your organizing business. And the important thing is that you do charge for that time because uh, shopping and making returns can be extremely time consuming. And so that's not something that you want to do off the clock. So what is the minimal storage containers that I may keep on hand? Um, I love to repurpose you know, shoe boxes and iPhone boxes, and they make really great drawer dividers, uh, particularly if you're using the Kanmari method. And uh, one of my specialties is also paperwork. So I do keep a file box uh, handy with like binder clips and file folders and other paper organizers. And so that way I have some method for corralling, you know, all that paper that I'm organizing. And I find that a collection of Ziploc bags in various sizes can act as temporary or sometimes permanent low cost storage containers. So there you have it. Storage containers surprisingly play a small role in my organizing business because of my niche in decluttering and downsizing and also lowering consumerism, but they may play a larger role in yours depending on the niche that you pursue in your business. So let me know in the comments below if you bring products ahead of time to your client jobs or what part storage containers play in your niche. And please subscribe to my channel for more tips on decluttering, downsizing, and the business of organizing. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.